Okay, thank you very much, um, Steffi, for the kind introduction. Of course, also thank you very much for the invitation to the DLD conference today to talk about this very important topic. Um, just maybe a brief introduction um, of today's, today's event. My name is Fabian von Heimburg. I run a brand acceleration platform in China and I also uh, try to connect the uh, European and uh, Chinese innovation ecosystems. Um, I think um, it's very important that um, both parts of the world, both the EU and China, have a very good um, yeah, uh, dialogue on a lot of issues and also the topic of climate change that we're going to talk today, about today. It's my pleasure today to also introduce um, our main guest today, um, um, European Commissioner for um, the Environment, Oceans and Fisheries, Virginius Sienkiewicz, um, um, uh, for this um, panel today. And um, to me, obviously, um, the, um, the most astonishing thing is, and also the most um, amazing thing is being a very young person myself, that the European Commissioner is himself very young. And I think this whole topic of climate change um, is, um, is, 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 a, is a really a topic for the, for the young generation. So I'm very excited, being a European myself, um, to, to have a young, um, young um, um, person also representing and, and this topic and putting it on the agenda. Um, thank you very much for joining us today, um, Commissioner, and I'm really looking forward um, to, your, to your statement today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your kind introductory words and, of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you, of course, for, for this invitation uh, to, to, to share with you some thoughts about Europe's future. And the recent months have opened, I think, many eyes. Uh, the pandemic has ravaged every continent taking close to, 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 to 4 million lives and, and, and putting enormous strain on our economies. And there are even bigger shocks waiting in, 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 in the wings. Climate change, biodiversity loss on land and in the oceans, and pollution of, of, of the planet, deforestation, uh, land use um, change, and, and, and the unsustainable exploitation of natural resources are, are driving climate change. And, and climate change, in turn, accelerates the destruction of the natural world. And the main force behind these impacts is also very well known. It's us. It's our patterns our, of consumption and, and production. We are using up natural resources at a rate that can't be sustained, and, and we are creating emissions of greenhouse gases pollutants and, and waste. But, and we need to remember this every day, we also have solutions. A more circular economy will reduce our carbon emissions and, 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 and lessen our impact on natural ecosystem. And if we keep our ecosystems healthy, they will help us mitigate and adapt to climate change. And this is a, those obvious solutions, which I think too often are overlooked uh, in, in the debate. And we have to focus on these solutions. Uh, they mean protecting forests and, and making sure Europe's consumption does not contribute to deforestation around the world. They also mean designing uh, products that last longer and are easy to repair, cutting emissions, pollution and waste. But they mean first and foremost a completely new attitude, a change in our way of thinking. And, and that thinking is already there in the European Green Deal. It was designed as a strategy for growth, bringing together environmental, economic, and, and, and social uh, sustainability, turning these challenges into opportunities as a part of a green and digital transition. And of course, with the impact of COVID-19, the deal has found an additional purpose. It has, it has become our roadmap for recovery and an opportunity to accelerate the transition which our society uh, needs. It offers an integrated strategy and there are strands to achieve carbon neutrality to protect and restore our natural capital and, and to decouple economic growth from resource use and pollution. Because it takes a systemic approach, it takes us beyond policies for climate and environment. What Green Deal offers is, is fundamental change for industry, for energy, agriculture, mobility, and finance systems, 
basically all across the sectors. It, and it's, it's, it's a move away from the old fashioned linear and, and, and high carbon economy and move in the right direction towards the carbon neutral, clean, innovative, inclusive and circular economy. An economy where we restore biodiversity and cut pollution while creating growth, jobs, prosperity and health. And it's, of course, a collective uh, road to recovery for the planet and for people. And I sometimes hear that environmentalists, uh, environmentalists are naive, uh, that, that we are dreamers, not really living in, 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 in the real world. Uh, but the only dream here is, is in imagining uh, we can continue as before, having this false image. Because if we fail to act on climate and environment, then disaster is going to be very real indeed. And over half of, of, of global GDP depends on nature and, and the services it provides. When you look at the costs of non-action, it's very clear that we can't afford it. And, and we, can, we can't afford not to invest in a green transition. It won't always be easy. The transition to climate neutrality will be very difficult, sometimes extremely difficult. Uh, but, we, but we already see that it can be done. We can take this leap into the future and will be uh, uh, politically feasible to make sure no one is left behind. Global heating is already underway. Uh, we can manage these changes by design and, and, and deliver a sustainable economy where we lower the risk of pandemics, where we limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius and put a break on a biodiversity loss. Or we can just let them happen and, and, and then face the, the increasingly catastrophic impacts of biodiversity loss, climate change that spirals out of control. Across Europe, governments are convinced that the Green Deal is the right path to a sustainable future. But there is little to be gained by going it alone. If we want to emerge stronger from the crisis, we have to work together with our international partners. The best outcome in the green transition would be a global race to, to, to the top because that's a race where everyone would win. So, of course, how do we make it happen? Working with our partners means strengthening multilateral environment agreements and, and making sure they are observed in practice. On biodiversity, our top priority is to agree an ambitious post-2020 global biodiversity framework at COP15 in Kunming, China. <laughs> to ensure lasting political commitment and to give the private sector the certainty it needs. We need goals that are ambitious and outcomes that are easy to understand. In, 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 in practice, that means protecting a far greater area of, of natural ecosystems and halting avoidable extinctions by 2050. It means targets with concrete actions, addressing all the main drivers of biodiversity loss. Whenever possible, these targets be measurable and, and limited in time. One of uh, the targets should be protecting 30% of lands and seas, and we need action around the world to protect vulnerable ecosystems like the polar zones. We need to push for higher climate ambitions at the Climate COP26 in Glasgow. Europe is leading the way with a new package of, of, of measures called Fit for 55. It sets a clear pathway to 55% emissions reductions by 2030 and climate neutrality by the middle of the century. And we are showing it can be done and encouraging others to increase their ambitions. In this battle against climate change, nature is a powerful force. Perhaps you have heard about nature-based solutions where we use natural ecosystems to slow the process of change. Nature can solve all our problems, but it can be a powerful complement to technological innovation and behavioral change. But we need an intelligent approach. For instance, monoculture plantations, which don't, don't benefit nature, will not help us solve the crisis. It actually do opposite. And as I said at the beginning, the Green Deal isn't just for the planet. It's, it's, it's for people, their health, well-being, their prosperity. And, and when we tackle air pollution, it's good for nature, but it also prevents premature deaths. It means better health and, and, and living conditions 
especially in cities and, 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 and benefits in terms of emissions reduction. And when we bring down emissions, we are protecting our future. It means that your children, your grandchildren can look forward to a future that, that's healthy and sustainable. And that's why the EU continues to push for global ambition on biodiversity and on climate change. But it's not just about politicians and leaders pushing for a change. It's about every citizen around the world. We all have a responsibility to do all we can to build that livable future, that prosperous future on a clean and healthy planet, protected for generations to come. It's a future we fight for, and I'm sure that, of course, you will contribute as best as you can. Thank you. Thank you very much for that um, very um, strong statement, um, Commissioner. Um, also covering a wide range of topics, which also shows how um, complicated climate, uh, cl climate change and also the carbon neutrality eventually is. Um, and maybe today uh, to, 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 to kick off the conversation or to ask a, quite a couple of questions, one of the topics I, I really wanted to cover is something that you also already mentioned in your statement, international cooperation. I mean, I live in China, it's also where we um, uh, kind of first met. Uh, China now is the world's largest um, carbon emitter, followed by the US and then um, Europe per capita. China is not the largest carbon emitter, but it's still the US and then China and then Europe. And historically, obviously, um, you know, you, the USA and Europe are probably still a little bit ahead of China, but we're also getting there. So um, it, it really is a global, global problem. You have China, you have India, Indonesia, and you know, these countries are going to be most affected by climate change, but these countries are also going to be the ones that will most uh, most likely cause a lot of um, the um, pollution of the future. So, so my question would be, um, how um, can the EU really contribute to a global reduction um, of greenhouse gases? And because the EU by itself, as you also mentioned, is only a, um, a small part of the whole um, solution. True. Uh even so, I, I really never like to, you know, uh, hide behind those numbers, who is the largest, what EU role plays, because I think it's, you know, all of our effort needed. And I'm very proud that EU is, is leading and leading by example. But you're right. Tackling climate change, biodiversity loss and, and, and cumulative pressures on, on, on oceans is, is a collective responsibility of all. And, and, and we need a, a strong collaborative action from, from all uh, the countries and actors at all levels. Science is very clear here. Uh, the world is, is getting close to existential tipping points on, on climate change. Uh, on the EU side, we have not only pledged to, to, to climate neutrality in 2050, but we have upgraded already ambitious um, NDC, moving our 2030 agenda from at least 40% to at least 55% percent greenhouse gas uh, reduction compared to 1990. And my portfolio, we have taken a number of, of major steps that are and will be contributing to addressing climate change and promoting green transition, uh, green transition. And, 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 and most importantly, all of those areas, they have a very clear international angle. Uh, for example, in, in, in biodiversity, uh, new strategy for 2030, which sets a clear ambition for biodiversity conservation and restoration, not only within the EU, but also globally, in cooperation with the international community around the world. The biodiversity and climate crisis are deeply inter intertwined. Uh, conserving and restoring biodiversity and ecosystems can make vital uh, contribution to addressing climate change. So much so that 30% of our climate mitigation targets could be met by nature-based solutions such as restoring forests, soils, and wetlands. And with our commitment to protect 30% of, of used lands and, and, and seas, our future EU restoration plan and our bold commitments on forests, soil, and fresh waters, just to make an example, the biodiversity strategy will make a crucial contribution to both climate mitigation and adaptation. And I also want to highlight that the fight against deforestation is a crucial for tackling climate change and, 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 and you, EU is ready to play its part 
by reducing deforestation driven by EU consumption and, and, and production through our upcoming legislation to minimize the risk of deforestation associated uh, uh, products placed on the EU market. And we are committed to, to take the first step, lead by example, uh, but we hope that others can join, uh, particularly other main consumer countries such as China and the US, for instance, as this is absolutely essential if we are to achieve meaningful uh, results at the at the global level. If you look at the ocean policy, the ocean and, 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 and climate nexus is an essential one and an in, integral part of our European Green Deal and international ocean governance agenda. And the oceans are part of the climate debate and, and vice versa. Both perspectives of, of, of mitigation and adaptations are crucial strongly reduced greenhouse uh, gas emissions need to be coupled with sustained and robust adaptation actions and in this respect our recent eu uh, adaptation strategy takes in, into consideration ocean dimension including fisheries and directly related issue is protecting and conserving marine ecosystems like the antarctica and its unique biodiversity which remains a top priority for the eu uh, climate change is arguably the single biggest threat facing Antarctica today and the annual meeting uh, of, of the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources in October this year will be an important opportunity to make progress on, on MPAs and we will intensify our efforts to, 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 to continue to engage at all levels and do utmost to achieve agreement on the new EU's proposal uh, on, on marine protected areas still this year. Yeah. Yeah, I think these points, like obviously, as you mentioned, that you also mentioned in your statement that the EU obviously is leading by example, and also there's a kind of global race now as being started to uh, reduce um, carbon, like EU 2050, uh, US 2050, even China 2060. That's that's obviously that that those are all very good developments, um, and then strengthening multilateral organizations. Um, maybe maybe another question relating to that. Um, I mean, because in China, I see it every day, you know, China is still not developed, like 600 million people still living um, in, 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 uh, in, obviously not in poverty anymore, but in, in, you know, conditions which are not equal to our middle class, they're developing, they have to still, you know, now China is producing a lot of coal, obviously you also have India, you have other countries. So these countries, they face completely different challenges than we do, right? But they still, they want to develop, but they also need to, kind of uh, uh, obviously reduce the carbon emissions. So, so what kind of, what's your thinking on this, on this issue? Because obviously there could be technology transfer, there could be aid, there could be just multilateral cooperation. There could be lots of different kind of ways to, to cooperate here. We are very, we are very much aware that of course, not all countries are at the same situation and, and, and that some face particular challenges. On the EU side, we have our Green Deal diplomacy, our trade and investment agenda and our external funding to support developing countries. We will use uh, different approaches in that context. Uh, we, we will work with, with our enlargement partners and our closest neighbors in the south and east. The Commission will step up the integration of the zero pollution ambition uh, in EU external action programs. And the EU will also continue to engage with the member states, the European Investment Bank and other relevant international financial institutions to further develop and increase pollution prevention investments to also encourage partner countries to improve uh, their policy and regulatory frameworks and put in place the right incentives to reduce pollution, notably through the use of green budgeting and environmental taxes. But we'll also support uh, developing countries by cooperation at the multilateral levels, where the EU will continue supporting international actions for zero pollution and implementation of the polluter pace principle in line with the SDGs and following up on, on, on resolutions by the United Nations Environment Assembly. Uh, we'll continue to, to, to leading on, on the work for, for an ambitious post-2020 international framework for the sound uh, management of, of, of chemicals and waste, and it will enhance actions under the Basel, Rotterdam, Stockholm, and, uh, and Minamata conventions on, on waste 
uh, electric and electronic equipment, hazardous chemicals and, and, and persistent organic pollutants and mercury. And it will promote together with the industry the, the implementation of the globally harmonized system of, of classification and labeling of chemicals. And of course, we'll promote uh, a global agreement on plastics. But action uh, by other major economies, such as the US, uh, China, or, or India, is, is also absolutely crucial if we are to achieve meaningful results. Uh, China, for instance, uh, has taken important steps to step up its ambition in, 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 in the shared fight to stop climate change, in particular with, with its um, in, uh, with its commitment to net zero, uh, as you said, by, 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 by 2060, and the launch of its emission trading system. China is also the host of, of CBD COP15, which shows the commitment to biodiversity conservation, and we will collaborate with Chinese partners and all other parties to reach an ambitious uh, outcome. It's also a key partner for global circular economy transition. That's, that's why we are engaging uh, in high-level dialogues. And I would like to probably also mention here that EU and Japan ad adopted just some weeks ago an, an ambitious green alliance through which we committed to cooperate bilaterally and internationally to accelerate the green transition. Yeah, that's, that, that's great to hear that obviously all these, I, I can also obviously see if, uh, being in China that all these multilateral efforts are being pushed forward and that the EU is really one of the key pillars of that. And maybe just um, a final question related to a, a different topic, something that we saw in the pandemic, low tech versus high tech, you know, in, in obviously countries like New Zealand, Australia, China, they, in my opinion, have implemented fairly low tech solutions to fight a pandemic, which is mostly a two week heavily enforced quarantine and lockdowns, which are kind of measures that have been um, known to humanity since thousands of years, right? They're not high-tech measures. Um, and then obviously, Anat, we have, you know, also in China, of course, but in Europe and the US, we have um, developed vaccines, even mRNA vaccines, so completely new technologies. So, so what I want to say here is that to climate change, there might be very high-tech solutions, like Bill Gates obviously says that, you know, we need to actually develop a lot of different technologies, otherwise it's impossible to change. But actually, there might also be a lot of, you know, low-tech solutions um, which we can immediately implement um, to, to, you know, um, really have a big um, outcome. So it would be interesting to hear your opinion on like uh, technology versus what we can already do now without developing new technologies. So, you know, I will put it this way, that technologies alone will not provide us the, the, the system change we need. Lifestyle changes will be an in, in, intrinsic and an essential part. And, and, and the EU citizens are showing us in, in the latest barometer that they are ready to act. More than two thirds agree that uh, their consumption habits uh, adversely affect the environment in Europe and the rest of the world. And th that's, that's why this, the, the, the circular economy action plan sets out a path to reduce our consumption footprint and, and double Europe's circular material use rate in the coming decade. We will protect uh, consumers from, from greenwashing, enabling them to, to true sustainable choices with the, with the new Green Claims Initiative. We will facilitate new consumption patterns uh, by stimulating circular, uh, circular business models, by encouraging the broader application of, of well-designed economic instruments, such as environmental taxation and, and enable member states to use value-added uh, tax rates. Addressing behavior, uh, behavioral change and, and consumption patterns such as excessive consumption of meat would further reduce pressures on both biodiversity and, and, and climate change. Uh, but of course, uh, there are many technologies that will help us in, in, in the green transition towards a, a carbon neutral and circular economy. Uh, addressing the, 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 the so-called triple crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss and pollution. To, to name a few, of course, uh, autonomous cars will, will help us uh, better introduce the, the sharing of mobility assets, reuse and recycling technologies in the construction sector will help us lower the embedded 
carbon footprint of buildings, digital technologies for precision farming will help us achieve a resource efficient agriculture. And these key sectors together uh, with several more um, are also addressed in, in, in our new EU circular economy action plan to achieve higher circularity. So technologies can provide the possibility to tag, trace, localize and, and, and share uh, product related da data along value chains down to the level of the individual components and, and materials and be also a, 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 a very huge uh, support in, in fighting climate change. But, uh, you know, the answer is that it requires both. Yes, I absolutely agree. It's, it's such a complicated problem. And I think in your, in your statement, your answers, you can see it has to be tackled from many different, uh, many different um, areas and many different approaches. Um, well, thank you very much today for this um, um, interesting statement and also great conversation. Um, and now back, back to Steffi. Thank you.